My pleasure to introduce a, a great leader of that movement, and I haven't seen her tonight, so I hope she's here. <laughs> <I'm> here. <laughs> <laughs> you all know who she is. Working families have no greater tribune. There is nobody up there who makes more sense and takes less nonsense. She knows how the rules got rigged. She knows what must be done to make them work for working people, and she is not afraid to crack heads. She hasn't been in Washington long, but you know, the agency she conceived and set up, the Consumer Financial Protection Agency, has already returned over a billion dollars to consumers from the abuses of credit card companies. She is now the senior senator from Massachusetts. Please welcome the leader of the Democratic wing of the Democratic Party, Senator Elizabeth. with so many progressives. Uh, I love it. I really do. I feel like I'm at a family reunion. Uh, I, well, actually, if you knew my family, this is better than a family reunion. Um, I want to say thank you very much to Bob and to Roger. Thank you for inviting me here tonight so that I could participate in this event. But most of all, thank you for all you're doing over and over and over for Campaign for America's Future. You are making it one of the leaders in the progressive movement. We need you, and you're out there making it happen. Thank you. Thank you. You know, that's what this really is. This is a movement. All of you here in this room, you are our leaders. You are leaders in your states, you are leaders in your cities and towns, you are leaders in your neighborhoods, you are leaders in your organizations. You are the people who will make this movement happen. You are the ones who will lead us into the future. And so I wanna thank you for being here and taking energy when we're all here together. It's powerfully important. So I thought when I had a chance, Bob, Bob raised something that's very important to me, and I thought, you know, if I'm going to get to be here with all of these leaders, I, I thought I'd tell a little story, because I thought it might, it might be fun. And the story is about something Bob mentioned. It's that a few years ago, I had an idea for a Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. And, thank you. And the idea behind it was really pretty simple. It was that we have really a little agency, relatively speaking, that would protect people from the tricks and traps in their credit cards. It would protect them from fraudulent mortgages. It would protect them from getting cheated in little ways and big ways over and over and over. It would stop that. That was the idea. So. So I thought, okay, I've got this idea. It's 2008. We've seen the big financial crisis. We've seen what goes wrong when you can target families. Because make no mistake about understanding the crisis of 2008. It started one lousy mortgage at a time. It started by targeting families and hurting families. That's how it all got started. So my idea was, okay, we're talking about now change. We don't want this crisis to hit us again. So I came down here to Washington. And I didn't know much of how you do this. So I went around. I talked to as many people as I could. And a lot of our friends. I went to see as many as I could. And I told them about this idea for an agency. And almost to a person, they had the same two responses. Different words, but the same two responses. The first was, that is a great idea. You could actually make a real difference in the lives of working families. You could actually do something that makes government work a little better here. You could actually do something that would help level the playing field just a little bit 
between the giant banks and the ordinary family. That was the first thing they said. Second thing they said was, don't do it. <laughs> now, I want you to think about this, why they always said don't do it. They said don't do it because you cannot possibly win. You can't possibly win because the largest financial institutions will make it their number one priority to kill that little agency. And they will put together the largest lobbying force ever assembled on the face of God's green earth to have one goal, and that is to make sure that agency does not make it into law. So don't do it because you can't win. Now, I am naive in the ways of Washington. <laughs> so I would hear this, and what I thought people were saying to me was, try harder. <laughs> I really did. <laughs> I read way too many Nancy Drew books growing up, you know, kind of <laughs> intrepid girl policymaker. And so, so I thought, okay, so how do you get this done? If you don't just come talk to the people who actually make law and have it happen that way, how do you get this done? And a friend of mine said, uh, you need to get organized. So I said, great, great, we get organized. So I set up a conference call. <laughs> Had two people on it, which I think legally does not qualify as a conference call. <laughs> but two became four, and four became 10, and 10 became 50. And then the idea of connecting with the groups, with others who were already organized, began to dawn on me. And all I can say, every time I think about this consumer agency, is God bless the groups that came in. God bless the AFL-CIO. God bless the steelworkers. God bless SEIU. God bless AARP. God bless PCCC. God bless Move On. God bless Consumers Union that got out there and got active on this. They did it, and they helped build a movement. It was a movement around financial reform. Leo, you were part of this, you remember. A movement around financial reform and a movement that said we will have this consumer agency. We are not gonna come out of this crisis without something that makes it just a little safer for American families. They got in there, they fought for it, and you know the answer, we won. We got the agency. People who get tricked on other financial products have got a way to get some redress for it, got a way to get some help. Mortgages, you can't get cheated on a mortgage today the way you got cheated five years ago. Those are real differences, real differences. So let me tell you what I take away from that, because this is what matters. I, I learned two lessons from this thing. The first one is, when people tell me you can't get anything done in Washington, give up now, there's nothing that can happen, I say back to them, we can win. That's the lesson, we can win. Yep, we gotta fight, we gotta fight, and look, you don't get anything you don't fight for. But if you fight, you got a chance to win. And that's what we did. So the first thing I learned, we can win. But the second thing I learned is we win because the things we are fighting for are America's agenda. Our agenda is America's agenda. We don't have to get out there and persuade people of things that aren't quite true. Give them some wiring on why it is you're all going to be better off if we just take a little slice out of Social Security. How it is you're all going to do just fine if there's not health care available to you. We're not trying to sell that. What we're doing is we're fighting for the things that Americans want. They know that Wall Street needs tougher rules, stronger enforcement. People know that. When we fight for it, we fight for America's agenda. They know that we need to raise the minimum wage. Anyone see some of those elections yesterday? 
When we fight for that, people know what we're fighting for. They know that we are here to protect Social Security and Medicare. When we fight for that, we fight for what America wants. People know we need to rebuild our infrastructure. We don't have a country that works if we don't build roads and bridges and power grids and clean energy. People understand that. When we fight for infrastructure, we fight for America's agenda. People believe in equal pay for equal work and a woman's right to choose. When we fight for those, we fight for America's agenda. And I gotta say, after today, people believe in equal employment opportunities and equal marriage, and equal means equal. But that is what we have to remember. We're out there fighting for what people want, for what people believe in. We're just the ones who give it voice.